Na mimi vile nilisema migori siju kama mnakumbuka wakati wa by election ya uchilo wa yako mimi nikasema jubilee atusimamishi. Wakati wa embakasi nikaomba na rais akatangaza jubilee atusimamishi. Nitaenda nizungumze na party leader wangu pia Kibra tusisimamishe mtu kama jubilee party. Hiyo tutamuomba kwa sababu kama seneta wa Nairobi nataka nije nipige campaign pamoja na ndugu yangu ndugu yangu Sifuna. Tupige campaign pamoja na viongozi wa ODM because of the handshake for one candidate because of the unity that can be lived in. So to field a candidate for the Kibra by-election or not, this might just be the biggest headache for the ruling Jubilee Party, whose latest moves regarding the Kibra by-election continue to expose the disunity within the party. From fake letters with names of aspirants sent to the IEBC, then later dismissed by the party's Secretary General, to the latest press release sent by the party calling on interested members seeking nomination in the by-election to file applications by Friday. Questions abound on whether this is the biggest test for the party's unity yet. On the other hand, ODM party has postponed its nomination exercise scheduled for Saturday to the 7th of September, citing lack of provision of security by the National Police Service owing to the census exercise. ODM lost one of its likely candidates for the seat Elud Owalo just three weeks ago to the ANC party that has given Owalo a direct ticket for the November 7th clash in a constituency well known to be an ODM stronghold. Tonight on The Big Story, we look at the political intrigues of this race that pundits have said sets the stage for the 2022 polls. In studio, I'll be joined by Langata Member of Parliament, Nixon Korir, who won a seat that, just like Kibra, was for decades seen and known as an opposition stronghold. We'll also speak to Kelvin Lunani, the ANC chairperson, on the party's plans for the Kibra race. Good evening. This is The Big Story. And I am Akisa Wandera. Let's begin with our lead reporter, Sofia Wanuna, who now hosts majority or minority leader of the National Assembly, John Badi. Good evening, Akisa. So on November 7th, the residents and electorate rather of Kibra constituency will go to vote for the next member of parliament. And already there is so much heightened activity in the political scene. And as far as this race is concerned, I'm joined tonight by the chairperson of the Orange Democratic Movement. He's also the leader of minority in the National Assembly, John Badi. Thank you for making time for us. Let's begin with your party. This is a region that clearly has stronghold. Uh, and you have held on to this seat even when it was in the larger Langata uh, for many years. Um, so with this race, first talk to us about the aspirants we have going into the nominations this week on Saturday. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, as you rightly put it, this is a very important seat for us. Uh, we all know that uh, by-elections are usually very tricky and therefore uh, parties don't take by-elections for uh, granted. We um, have taken it so seriously. And um, the fortunate thing is that there's been a lot of interest in uh, our party or those aspirants who want to run uh, in our party. We received actually 20 applications first for, uh, to run for the seat, mm -hmm. uh, the, the list which has since been uh, vetted and uh, after considering other conditions um, that were put, uh, all of which the party has put in its uh, uh, in our regulations, elec election regulations, mm -hmm. uh, the list has now come down to 11. And that is the list that we have, uh, we actually sent uh, last evening mm -hmm. to uh, IEBC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Who will run these elections, the nominations? Uh, certainly, ODM has a national elections board, and that is the board that is going to uh, run the nomination. We have already made communication to the same, uh, that our nominations will be conducted on... Um, on Saturday, yes. uh, the 31st, mm -hmm. and uh, right now it's a preparation. Uh, the National Elections Board uh, have already put to the party request for funding for the same, which the party I would confirm that uh, we have already uh, made uh, arrangements yes. in terms of financing the by-election. And uh, I don't think uh, if uh, there are problems with the uh, by-election, I mean with the nomination, 
it should not be attributed to funding. Right. Uh, for those with concerns about the impartiality of the NEB and would have perhaps preferred for there to be seen to be uh, a more above board process, quote unquote, conducted by the IEBC, wasn't that a consideration going into this? You know, I don't know where people are getting this confidence on IEBC because as a party we have had a number of issues with IEBC in terms of uh, conducting uh, the electoral process in this country and with huge amounts of money at their dispo disposal, they have not been able to, able to conduct uh, what one would call credible uh, party, I mean credible elections, mm -hmm. uh, general elections. But even further, right now IBC as it is constituted, um, we have um, a lot of varied opinions, but uh, my position is that it is not properly constituted. Mm -hmm. So why do we give sanity to a body that uh, really uh, has, is struggling? Uh, so to speak. But on our National Elections Board, I'm not trying to defend that uh, it has not had challenges in the past. We have had challenges. In fact, immediately after the last election, remember, we set up a task, a task force to look at uh, the problems regarding our nomination process and, and all the f uh, other uh, aspects that affect uh, the party. Our National Elections Board has had challenges, uh, but those challenges are challenges that we deal with. One of the biggest challenges that the National Elections Board has been grappling with, are, 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 there are actually two issues. Number one mm -hmm. has been the funding. Uh, number two is the timing or the time uh, for pre uh, preparing for the by-election. Mm -hmm. And with the time, uh, they are gaining experience. I will tell you, I've participated in nominations of uh, ODM from 2007. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that uh, there has been improvement, much as people may uh, condemn uh, National Elections Board, uh, but there are some. There have been some improvements, mm -hmm. and we. This is just one election. This is just a, a nomination for a constituency. I don't think Elections Board will have much challenges with right. this, and it's given the fact that it is here in Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, so there will be no tra transporting or materials which may face challenges. Yeah. We are just around here, and many of us are there to provide logistical support and again, mm -hmm. but allow the National Elections Board to uh, maintain its independence. Yeah. And there are still concerns on violence that yes. sometimes we've seen the breakout of the same yeah. in the past. So what measures have been put in place to avert this? Actually, that is one of the biggest challenges and then later it is attributed to the party. But mm -hmm. the people who cause or uh, champion and promote violence in our nomination processes, uh, it is usually the candidates. And uh, so two things. Number one, I think we have prepared adequately in terms of of security. I'm not going to say the numbers, but we have organized for security and we are even paying uh, for the security on that day. We have 180 I mean, polling stations mm -hmm. and each will have sufficient security. And if you are found to cause uh, chaos, you are interfering. Uh, those who are interfering with the, with the nomination should know mm -hmm. that this is part of electoral process. Mm -hmm. And if you are found to have interfered with the nomination of a political party, mm -hmm. it is you and you are guilty. Uh, for the charge, it is as bad as interfering with the general election. You can be disqualified for a number of years uh, that you cannot even be allowed to contest. Okay. So candidates need to know that. But another thing, we have also come out so clearly and told them that sometimes they are failing us. They should inform the National Ex Executive uh, Council of the party, mm -hmm. NEC, of anybody who tries to interfere with this nomination. So, so that for the first time, mm -hmm. the party takes a ruthless decision mm -hmm. that I think members will support because members have been complaining that the name of the party is being tarnished mm -hmm. by a few individuals. Mm -hmm. It's not even so widespread as people think. Mm -hmm. like last election, 2017, there were a few incidences of uh, violence yeah. in our election. And we conducted elections the same day, nominations the same day across the country. Mm -hmm. But there were just a few constituencies where we had violence. And the, that uh, smears and makes uh, our party appear like we are not able and ready to do uh, nominations. Okay. So this time, if there is anyone who is going to attempt to interfere with the Kibera uh, nomination, we have told them, let them give us clear report and we deal with those individuals. Right. And we'll wait to see how the nominations are conducted this Saturday. We'll be covering that. Yes. Uh, but are you disappointed that Jubilee is fielding a candidate? Senator Sakaja uh, had indicated that um, he wishes and hopes his party would not. They have uh, made clear that they will be fielding a candidate. In the handshake era, is this an issue you see that could bring problems? Yeah, I think after handshake, uh, handshake last uh, year between Raila Odinga and uh, the President Uhuru Kenyatta, mm -hmm. uh, we actually have uh, had a very good uh, working relationship between uh, 
uh, ODM and Jubilee as uh, political outfits, uh, some working relationship that had never been experienced before. And I remember when uh, Sakaj, the same Sakaja made pronouncement in Migori, uh, the Jubilee decided not to field a candidate. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe because of that or maybe because of uh, that, uh, the, the other considerations. Mm -hmm. But uh, they didn't field a candidate in Migori. Uh, they didn't field a candidate in Uganda, although we didn't win that seat. Mm -hmm. um, also, Mbakasi, although Mbakasi was not an ODM seat, mm -hmm. Mbakasi was actually a wiper seat. We were trying to wrestle it from uh, a wiper. Mm -hmm. And so that, and we also didn't uh, uh, field candidate in Wajia West mm -hmm. uh, constituency, despite the fact that it was our seat. So one would have expected that um, in Kibra, in that spirit, and given that the, the fact that we are still uh, uh, coming together as a country, and our priority, and the priority of the two leaders when they, uh, when they signed the nine-point agenda mm -hmm. uh, was to bring the country together. So one would have expected that we don't uh, face each other in a, by election as early as this. Mm -hmm. But again, you see political parties are formed to uh, win power and win seats. Mm -hmm. And um, within political parties, there are dynamics. And I, ex I suspect, and I think it's out there, that there are dynamics in Jubilee, mm -hmm. uh, which may have... Uh, occasion uh, the rethink and now the uh, possibility. I'm not sure whether they will uh, field a candidate, but the possibility of Jubilee fielding a candidate. For me and uh, where I stand, I just want to say that it is not our concern whether Jubilee fields a candidate or not. Uh, as a party, we are more concerned with our own uh, processes and our own system and our party. Yeah. Uh, we are preparing to do a credible nomination process that once we finish, and given the fact that Kibera is largely uh, ODM constituency, that should be it. Mm -hmm. Once we, de we are done with the nomination, uh, it should be as good as the seat is won. Yeah. So whatever Jubilee is going to do, it would have been more decent if they didn't fill a candidate, but if they have made that decision, they are a, it is a party. Mm. We can't and also control. you can already see within Jubilee disagreements on how to go about it, how who yeah. will be on the ballot, but also ANC. Um, we understand they will also be fielding within NASA. So what does all this speak to? So that on one hand, of course, it's democracy. Everyone is allowed to run if they yes. so desire. Mm. But then there's the little, that this is one house NASA, then this is a handshake era. So to you, other than indecent, what is this for the uh, politics of Kenya, especially going into 2022? On the issue of NASA, remember, well, Sophia, we have complained about NASA a number of times. I think, to me, NASA as an outfit, we really need to think through it mm -hmm. uh, clearly. Because apart from fielding the presidential candidate, all the other seats we competed, even where it was not necessary. Remember, my greatest challenger in the last election, and I'm the chairman of the Orange Democratic Movement, was um, actually a Ford Kenya candidate. Mm -hmm. Whereas, as we decided uh, to... A note to fill the candidates against Wetangula and even senior officials of Fort Kenya. Still, he didn't see it necessary to uh, pay back to ODM by mm -hmm. uh, also not fielding candidates against uh, senior members of the party. Mm -hmm. Junette was faced by an ACNC candidate and many others. I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. uh, remember even um, uh, Joho, who is our deputy party leader, mm -hmm. faced um, a wiper candidate uh, uh, even in, uh, in, in, the, in Kakamega our deputy party leader, Oparanya, faced uh, a Ford Kenya candidate. And so the bottom line is this, that um, as NASA, I think we have uh, really not synchronized. And that is why sometimes uh, some of our people, uh, our members, ask whether NASA exists mm -hmm. or it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to discuss that now. It is their choice. They have made a decision. On Jubilee, I have mentioned that the dynamics in Jubilee is well known to Kenyans. Mm -hmm. uh, I think those dynamics is what is at play at the moment. Mm -hmm. And that is why I don't want to really stress myself with what the happenings in Jubilee. Mm -hmm. I want to concentrate on managing and uh, running ODM as a chairman. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to just uh, add that sometimes uh, this then makes me understand that ODM is the only party that Kenyans take seriously. Mm -hmm. All these other parties, have you asked, uh, why is it that Kenyans are not asking whether they are conducting nomination? Mm -hmm. Have you heard where Kenyans are questioning whether ANC is going to conduct uh, pa party primaries mm -hmm. or even Jubilee? It's only ODM. If we today say that we are fielding a direct 
uh, a candidate uh, giving a direct ticket to one of the candidates, mm -hmm. you will see it will be the headline, yeah. the media, that ODM is being undemocratic. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, I enjoy it. And it's uh, really pleasing to see that uh, it's only uh, ODM that Kenyans consider mm -hmm. or want to always be democratic. So talk to us, because I imagine they'll all be putting their best foot forward in this by-election, knowing very well that this is ODM's stronghold. How are you approaching it differently, perhaps from lessons learned in Uganda, yes. um, in uh, Embakasi, so that we saw the confidence there, a confident ODM going, losing, and it wasn't good for the party. It wasn't a good showing at the time. So in this particular instance, yeah. are there lessons you're drawing from those losses to ensure you don't have a repeat today uh, with this by-election? You know, that's why I started by saying that uh, by-elections are usually very tricky, mm -hmm. and uh, by-elections, you have to approach them differently. It's not like a general election where we even have a presidential candidate and mm -hmm. people are going as a package. In nominations, people tend to be more critical, detailed in terms of making assessment of uh, the candidates, mm -hmm. as unlike where parties are elected. Now, um, looking at this, and I know that everybody believes that ODM is a front runner in this election, uh, we have to do the best to make sure that we maintain our advantage. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which is uh, uh, is about uh, uh, one of which is about conducting a free and fair nomination process, mm -hmm. uh, which I've talked about. And uh, by the way, I want to also mention that it is not. Uh, unusual for uh, ODM to lose. We have lost uh, seats before. I don't know why. First of all, I've said Mbakazi wasn't our seat. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, uh, then the only seat that I think uh, probably shocked people that we lost was Ugenia's seat. Mm -hmm. And um, I've heard a lot of people saying that we should have done a nomination process. This is an incumbent whose election was nullified mm -hmm. or annulled by the court. Mm -hmm. We have never, since uh, ODM started being, uh, being in existence, I can't remember any time we have subjected to an, an incumbent, mm -hmm. uh, we have subjected an incumbent whose election has been annulled to a nomination process until, unless it is very, very necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, even Garissa, we have a civic uh, by election there, I mean, MCA by election, mm -hmm. and we have just given the ticket uh, to the person who was in office. Mm -hmm. So, uh, really, giving Karan uh, a ticket in Uganda was not a wrong move. The only thing maybe we are going to do is to adjust our campaign and deal with the propaganda because mm -hmm. what hurts ODM a lot is the propaganda. First, the propaganda is ODM is being undemocratic, mm -hmm. yet, all the other competitive, the parties we compete with, there is no single day we, s we have seen them conduct uh, nomination. Even the Uchiang, Uchiang who went ahead and won the Ugenya seat, where did, he, where did his party conduct nomination? Mm -hmm. But you see the threshold with which ODM is held mm -hmm. is higher. Uh, and, and, and I think that propaganda sometimes eats into the party. Sometimes even leaders who are elected by electorate are the nomination. Later it turns out that the party has forced electorate on us. Mm -hmm. I know, and I will not mention, one governor who actually in 2013 was second to Raila in terms of popularity in his county. But after he was elected and he failed to deliver, uh, the, the whole county and the country is saying ODM forced him on them, which is a total lie. Yeah. So I want to just to say that our party is as, as, as usually been held very high in terms of uh, democratic principles, mm -hmm. and we are going to try to maintain that. It's not easy, and because we have limitation of resources, we have limitation of time. In fact, we were even asking Sophia, and this is a question that needs to be directed to I, uh, ABC. Mm -hmm. I want to end there. Mm -hmm. That why would ABC uh, push us? to nom do nomination within a week and give candidates over two months for campaigns. Mm -hmm. First of all, it is even too expensive for, for candidates, mm -hmm. I would tell you. And okay. it is, it is it, it, it's a kind of bringing fatigue to even the electorate mm -hmm. to subject them to two months of campaign. Mm -hmm. Like Kibera people should be going to work, but you will find uh, the, 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 the candidates campaigning throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And it is even uh, uh, dangerous to the economy because there are some people who, and you know Kenya with the, the campaigns with money, mm -hmm. the electoral processes with money, some people will just be waiting in their houses uh, for handouts. And that is not very good for the economy. Yeah. So why can't they put more time for the parties to conduct their nomination processes mm -hmm. and then uh, limit the campaign even to one month. Yeah. Even general elections, the campaigns take just about one month. But when it comes to by elections, the campaigns are, are are opened up for over two months. Yeah. I don't understand it. Yeah. But all. confident of a win, briefly? Oh, definitely, yes. We are confident of a win, okay. uh, but with the grace of God. You know, uh, this is... Uh, 
people making decisions. We just want to plead and appeal to our voters in Kibera, uh, more particularly the ODM supporters, that this is a very important uh, seat for us. We are going to a very important period. Let them elect ODM candidate. Thank you. Thank you very much. John Bardi, the chairman of the Orange Democratic Movement, confident of a win, calling upon the members uh, to support their candidate, who will be known uh, following those uh, nominations coming this Saturday. But as to what all of this will pretend for the country and as far as the handshake with Jubilee now fielding a candidate, but also within Jubilee itself, how will they resolve the issues on who will run on a Jubilee ticket and also the Nasser family, ANC, planning to field? Which direction will Wiper go? All of this up in the air, but will definitely by November the 7th, the day of the by-election, we will start to see how all this uh, will all go going forward. Akisa. Well, a conversation that my colleague, our lead reporter here on The Big Story, Sophia Anuna, had with John Mbadi earlier on in the day. But we have the latest developments from the ODM National Elections Board um, that say that they have postponed the party nomination exercise in Kibra constituency that was scheduled on the 31st of August 2019 to the 7th of September 2019. And they've gone ahead to cite the reason that is lack of provision of security by the National Police Service citing commitment to the ongoing national census exercise. So ODM party has postponed its um, nomination exercise to the 7th of September. And they say in view of the above reason, the National Elections Board has notified the Independent Electoral Boundaries uh, Commission IEBC of their rising issues and the decision. Remember, the IEBC had given interested parties until Monday to submit names of those that they have uh, picked as, you know, interested in vying for the Kibra by election. And uh, the NEB now urges all the cleared aspirants to continue their peaceful campaigns in preparation for the exercise. A statement sent to newsrooms just about an hour ago by Senator Judith Pareno, who's the chairperson of the National Elections Board of the ODM party. And of course, we've also seen some all the things that were said there by John Bardi in a conversation with our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna. Quickly, once again, let me introduce my guest in studio, Nixon Korir, Member of Parliament for Langata, and Kelvin Lunani, who's the ANC chairperson. Gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us here on The Big Story. And I'll just go straight into it with you, Nixon Korir, given that you are um, a an MP who won in an area largely viewed as an ODM or opposition stronghold, and also being a member of Jubilee in the recent or the few past few days, we've seen conflicting statements coming out of the party that have continued to pile pressure um, on whether really uh, Jubilee will be fielding a candidate or not. From where you sit, where does the party stand, bearing in mind the latest developments on the Kibra by-election? <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I think uh, uh, going by what the Secretary General um, of Jubilee Party uh, communicated today, it is very clear that uh, Jubilee Party will be fielding a, a candidate in a Kibra constituency. And, um, and I think uh, that is the position as it is right now. Um, of course, there were a few uh, hiccups in terms of communication, which the, the, secretary, the secretary General has clarified. And, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I can say confidently that Jubilee uh, will be fielding a, a candidate in Kibra constituency. Uh, the secretary General has called upon um, all those who are interested in vying for the parliamentary position in Kibra to submit their papers and documents and all the requirements that have been indicated by the party by the end of, uh, by, by end of Friday, so that uh, the national, uh, the election board, the party election board will, uh, will look at the documents and uh, ascertain if all the members that have, uh, have, have submitted the papers, if they have qualified, then the Jubilee party will, will make a decision uh, on who is uh, the candidate for the Kibra. Earlier on, we played a clip of uh, Senator Sakaja saying that he would love to see the party not field a candidate in, of course, the spirit of the handshake. And, of course, we have a section of members of Jubilee who are um, in view of the same. What are your thoughts? That's uh, the opinion of the senator. And, uh, you know, this is a democratic country that uh, everyone has his own opinion or her own opinion 
but uh, I want to defer with him because um, in the spirit of handshake, I think everyone should actually be given an opportunity because I know one of the uh, main objectives of the, of the handshake was not to kill democracy. And I think the people of Kibra should be given an opportunity to decide who their leader is and uh, to allow any political party who so wishes to fill the candidate, to fill the candidate. Yeah. And I think Jubilee Party should be given an opportunity to fill their candidate. I know, uh, you know, Anshek is there, but um, I know uh, Anshek uh, and democracy, I mean, uh, should be, actually should be celebrated. I mean, um, the candidates who compete. I, I, I heard Honorable Badi saying that uh, in the spirit of Anshek, Shubli should not uh, fill the candidate. But I think it's to the contrary. I think um, the, the true unity and true Anshek is in competing and after winning, the person who wins uh, is, is congratulated. Um, in, in Ugenya, in Migori, in Mbakasi, ODM has done the same for Jubilee in Wajia West. What's different this time? You know, that is the decision of the party then, but that does not mean that they were doing the right thing. Yes. So are you saying they were not doing the right thing with the past three by or four by-elections? It depends. I mean, uh, if the party decided to, uh, to, to not to fill the candidate, it, is not, uh, it, is not, it is doesn't entirely mean that that was the right thing. But to me, this is a democratic country. It's not, uh, it's, we, are not, we, are not, we are competing with ODM. ODM. You must remember that uh, Jubilee is not a member of, uh, of NASA. Uh, as Mbadi said, if NASA agrees that uh, one, uh, one constituency is, uh, is, uh, is, is, may, is, uh, is actually assigned to a certain party in, this, in, the, in, in, their, in, their, in their plan and their strategy to win more seats, then that's okay. But this ODM and, and, and Jubilee are not in, in a coalition and therefore they are competing parties here. Yeah. REBC confirms receipt of a list of candidates from Jubilee. Um, of course, we've seen um, the party dismiss this particular list, but if you are privy to this um, information, who drew up this list? What are your thoughts about this recent, um, you know, list dismissal? statement again today. What are your thoughts? You know, Akisa, um, I think that has been clarified, clarified by the Secretary General. Um, uh, the list that was submitted to IBC, I don't know uh, where it came from, but uh, what we stand by right now is, uh, is the position of the Secretary General of, of Jubilee Party. Mm -hmm. And I think we shouldn't dwell on a list that uh, has been dismissed. Uh, we are living in an era of fake news. And we don't know if that was a part of a, just a generated list, who generated it, we don't know. So uh, the position right now is that Jubilee is receiving candidates uh, until Friday. All right, fake news yes. or not, we'll see about that in a few um, days or weeks. Let's speak to ANC Party Chairman Kelvin Lunani. Thank you for joining us. Uh, for ANC, uh, luckily or not, they don't have to deal with what Jubilee and ODM are currently dealing with. We are aware that um, you've given a direct party ticket to Elio Dowalo. Speak to us about that. Yeah. Uh, first, I'll start by sending my condolences to the Kibera people. And uh, number two is that uh, it's not per se a direct nomination. You see, ANC is an integrity and a peaceful party. And you see, we only open door to the right people. And you see, when there were people who submitted their names, but uh, some had to step aside because uh, the, the timelines were out. Uh, some, the, uh, they just found out that uh, they are not too up to the task. So we remained with Owalo, who we believe is the capable candidate that can really fit into the little court's shoes. So when he just ditched ODM about uh, three weeks ago, I mean, were there no other members who've been part of ANC uh, for a longer time? What <coughs> informed this decision to pick Owalo? I think that's not right. Uh, Owalo has been uh, our member for quite some time, I think even more than four months. Um, he left ODM some months back, and he's been our member. And that's why today we were just uh, officially giving him uh, his life membership. But being a member, he's been a member for quite some time. And uh, it is a party decision after consideration on all party bodies mm -hmm. that we settled on him. And especially it's not that the party appointed him. We sat with the Kibira people uh, and they presented us with him. 
as their best candidates or their best bet to face oh. the ODM. All right, I'm sure there's a, a lot of questions even online that I've seen uh, with regards to this decision. I want us to take a quick break. This is the big story. Stick with us. We're talking about the Kibra by-election race. Tweet us any questions, concerns, comments. Atakisa Andera at KTN News KE. The hashtag to use is the big story. We'll be